Put down the gun. Stop! No one can survive these deadly rays! These deadly rays will be your death. Ten Star Wars ripoff movies that are best for drunken evenings. George Lucas's 1977 space opera, Star Wars, shattered every box office record and unleashed a vast array of hype beyond fans' comprehension at the time. In fact, with the release of subsequent films in the franchise, people began referring to the eras before Star Wars and after Star Wars. No surprise that even Star Wars saw its fair share of ripoffs. These movies are so cheesy, they present their own brand of entertainment. This video brings you a list of such films that every Star Wars fan should watch, especially when they are partially drunk. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. <laughs> Starcraft, 1978. Outlaw smugglers Stella and Acton pick up a castaway while running from the authorities. This castaway turns out to be the sole survivor of a secret mission to destroy a superweapon designed by the evil Count Zarth Arn. The galaxy's emperor soon recruits the pair of smugglers to complete the mission and rescue his son, who has gone missing. Italian filmmaker Luigi Cozzi directed the space opera starring Carolyn Monroe, Marjo Gortner, Christopher Plummer, and David Hasselhoff. An interesting tactic used by the first wave of filmmakers creating Star Wars ripoffs was that they incorporated just enough tropes from the movie to portray the resemblance, but not breach copyright. This film has a handful of cheesy action sequences with an eccentric plot. Its special effects are colorful and eye-popping. The set designer has a creative eye for crazy, psychedelic, cocaine-flashing, disco-themed environment that overwhelms the audience. The actors deliver decent performances, and a logic-defying dialogue gives viewers a good laugh. Nevertheless, its colorful costumes, jerky stop-motion monsters, and psychedelic blobs of light make for good low-budget entertainment. Although viewers are aware of the shortcomings of this hilarious Star Wars ripoff. If watched with an open mind, it makes for a fun evening with friends. Let's get the hell out of here! Space Hunter Adventures in the Forbidden Zone, 1983. Three women make an emergency landing on a planet plagued by a fatal disease. Unfortunately, they are captured by the evil dictator, Overdog. Bounty hunter Wolf comes to their rescue and meets Nikki along the way, the only Earthling remaining from a medical expedition. The two of them work together to rescue the women from Overdog. Although the vast majority of Star Wars ripoffs at the time contained the filmmakers' unique twists, some of them actually did a great job. Lamont Johnson's movie starring Peter Strauss and Molly Ringwald portrays great performances by the duo. Johnson redefines campy in this post-apocalyptic sci-fi film with cheesy 3D animation. He displays a handful of down-to-earth characters with incredible depth. The film is loaded with Star Wars references, including the same sound effects used for R2-D2. It's surrounded by rubbery creatures and a thunderstorm-esque atmosphere. It displays good makeup and decent special effects. Although the dialogues are ridiculous, the characters delivering them are memorable. The film evokes an all-around feeling of action and adventure that low-budget sci-fi 80s films lacked. The dark and barren scenery complements the brisk pace of this brainless yet lovable low-budget space opera flick. The Humanoid Hoping to overthrow his brother as ruler of the planet Metropolis, the evil Grawl takes help from the insane Dr. Craspin. They test his chemicals capable of turning an ordinary person into a perfect soldier on a pilot named Golob. This turns Golob into a mindless, indestructible automaton with superhuman strength. The people of Metropolis are in trouble because of this, and someone must outwit Grawl before he creates an army of them and destroys the planet. This movie, directed by Aldo Leto, cuts it pretty close to the resemblance of making it a Star Wars ripoff. 
It incorporates a similar opening sequence with rolling text portraying detailed current events. Additionally, the main antagonist's costume resembles Darth Vader's, who commands a triangle-shaped spaceship resembling a Star Destroyer. The movie gains its production value from being crummy and downright lame. It is created by several big shots from Italian cult cinema. Antonio Margaretti designed its cheesy visual effects, and Aneo Miracone provided it with its so-called music score. Avid Star Wars fans immediately recognize this film for the schlocky ripoff that it is because of its shots, images, sequences, and characters. These have been cheaply shuffled around without any regard for their hilarious presentation. Nevertheless, with its quirks, this movie showcases decent camera work and extraordinary entertainment. So grab your friends and a few drinks and let this film sink right in. Galaxina, 1980. The crew of the Infinity police cruiser is finally heading home after a long stay in deep space. Just when they're about to get some much needed rest, a new mission is piled onto them. They have to travel to the alien world Alter One to find the Blue Star. Their journey to this world leads them to an outer space brothel filled with alien women and a gang of Harley Davidson worshippers. Can Galaxina and the crew find the blue bird and save the world? Director William Sachs uses a half-hearted plot and turns it into a well-crafted story by merely starring an attractive and kind of famous model, Dorothy Stratton, as the lead. This sci-fi comedy is a parody of high-end movies like Star Wars, Star Trek, and Alien. It contains ridiculous dialogue that consists of jokes, puns, and gags that make viewers roll on the floor laughing. Even with its low budget, decent acting, and average writing, viewers can't help but appreciate the film for being an exceptional rendition of the space opera franchise. The plot is loaded with subtle catastrophes and nuances that extract mostly bad elements. Despite its cheap jokes, Galaxina was a beautiful woman, and Dorothy Stratton showcases pretty good performance. Viewers are primarily drawn to this film for its eccentric soundtrack. Moreover, keeping its campy special effects and cinematography apart, they are blown away by its widescreen display. Overall, it is a hilarious and enjoyable movie to enjoy with your friends and loved ones on a Saturday night. <laughs> Hawk the Slayer, 1980. Hawk has suffered by watching his father die at the hands of his brother, Voltan. He sets out on a quest to search for companions who will help him in his fight to stop his brother's evil reign. Not every Star Wars ripoff was a sci-fi film. Terry Marcel's Hawk the Slayer was a sword and sorcery adventure movie that bears a close resemblance to George Lucas's space opera. While things like Evil Lords, The Chosen One, and Magic Swords are not a copyright of the Star Wars franchise, the way Terry Marcel showcases it in this film might shock Star Wars fans. The film borders on parody with its laughable special effects and obvious campy dialogues. The best thing about B-movies is that many a time, actors are aware of it being one, and it is recognizable through their performances. The attempt at serious acting only makes it more comedic. Nevertheless, the entire film is self-aware of its schlocky vibe, which raises its entertainment value and leaves 80s B-movie and Star Wars fans wanting more. Overall, this movie is an enjoyable watch, but only if you're drunk. Star Odyssey, 1979. In the year 2312, a group of aliens auction off insignificant planets, and Earth is won by an evil despot named Cress. After flying to Earth, he begins gathering humanoid slaves using his robot army to sell them to his evil counterparts. Professor Maori and his friends set out to reclaim the planet from Cress and his cyborg army. This film, directed by Alfonso Breccia, contains mawkish dialogue corny special effects, and a decent setting. Its background music is dingy, which complements its atmosphere. It has cartoon-like sound effects that contribute to making this ripoff every B-movie lover's dream come true. 
The plot is something straight out of the 1920s pulp novel with strutting heroes combined with mentally superior scientists. It has memorable characters that add to its entertainment value by providing a comedic impact. The alien overlord's superiority over humans is displayed via a creative black and white montage. Despite the film's campy vibe, the ridiculous aspects of it make it enjoyable to viewers. In fact, the actors display decent performances. Overall, this outrageous space epic is entertaining because of its humor, its out-of-the-ordinary plot, and a decent attempt at a Star Wars ripoff. <laughs> Message from Space 1978. The Gavana's empire has conquered the peaceful planet of Jelusia. Kido, leader of the Jelusia tribes, sends eight Liaba seeds to be received by certain chosen ones to defend the planet from a steel-skinned Gavanas warrior. Each recipient, ranging from the hardened general Garuda to young Mia, all evoke different reactions on being chosen for the task. This Japanese-branded Star Wars ripoff, directed by Kinji Fukasaku, portrays an eccentric set of characters, including a witty robot, a guy in a glittery jacket, two guys in disco space suits, and a plucky girl. This adds a humorous yet diverse spin on the film's plot. However, the attempt at showcasing a ferocious villain becomes moot the moment he appears on screen. The movie portrays bizarre but creative attempts to replicate George Lucas's masterpiece with its unique and charming weirdness. It displays great action sequences with sword fights and brilliant, campy special effects. The makeup artists do a good job with the spaceship monsters, and Vic Moreau delivers a decent performance. Its dialogue is ridiculous, but shows creativity from the crew's side to borrow from Star Wars, but not to copy it exactly. Finally, there is an abundance of Star Wars-oriented jokes in this corny, but entertaining ripoff. Battle Beyond the Stars, 1980. Shad, a young farmer, assembles a band of diverse mercenaries in outer space to defend his planet from the evil tyrant Sador. Among the mercenaries are a space cowboy, a truck driver from Earth, a wealthy, experienced assassin, and Saint X-Men, a Valkyrie warrior. This space opera, produced by Roger Corman and directed by Jimmy T. Murakami, serves as the latter's debut. It is widely recognized by a large cult following. A remarkable array of future industry personalities participated in creating this low-budget flick. This includes John Salis with his decent screenplay, James Cameron as the art director, and James Horner providing the movie with Star Wars quality music. It is a remake of Akira Kurosawa's 1954 Seventh Samurai that attempts to stay as faithful to the original as possible. It has a great cast of Richard Thomas, Robert Vaughn, and John Saxon, who portray brilliant performances. This is one of the best Star Wars ripoffs, with its impressive production quality. Although its special effects are slightly shaky, it compensates by creating an atmosphere that touches deep emotional chords for viewers. Despite its corny dialogues, it perfectly portrays the human condition through a sci-fi tale and is the ideal movie to watch with some popcorn, drinks, and great friends during a sleepover. Space Raiders, 1983. Hawk, a former space service colonel, and his crew are on a mission to steal a freighter owned by an interstellar corporation called The Company. During the theft, Peter, a 10-year-old boy, slips aboard the freighter, and the pirates steal it, unaware of him being on board. This space western film, directed by Howard R. Cohen, is a touching B-movie with a plot filled with inconsistencies. It is the ultimate second-hand movie that uses music, props, and cheesy special effects from Roger Corman's world. They are assembled to create a campy coming-of-age tale. The film contains a few moments of action sequences that prove the characters aren't all hopeless. It has entertaining fight scenes that provide viewers with good comedy elements, and the actors portray decent performances. For a low-budget flick, the crew paid careful attention to detail with makeup, and some of the aliens and extravagant creatures have an out-of-the-ordinary comic book touch to it. Despite the movie's shortcomings, viewers must keep in mind that these are the stuff most great classics emerge from. 
Therefore, if watched with an open mind and heart, Space Raiders is a movie that can certainly be enjoyed. The Man Who Saves the World, 1982, aka Turkish Star Wars. Two space cadets, Murat and Ali, crash land on a desert planet. Here, they are faced with several life-changing adventures. They're soon captured by an evil 1,000-year-old wizard who claims that he's from Earth and seeks the ultimate power to take over the world. Zombies, skeletons, wizards, and a tad romance. This movie, directed by Satin Inank, has it all. It portrays an unusual blend of martial arts, fantasy, and sci-fi that make it a highly entertaining watch. It received its name as Turkish Star Wars due to its unauthorized use of footage, music, and sound effects from Star Wars and other sci-fi films. Viewers enjoy this film because, despite its cheesiness, it is self-aware of its laughable camera work and remains one of the unrestrained, jealously goofy Star Wars ripoffs to exist. It is undeniable that despite its flaws, the director and the actors do a decent job on a shoestring budget. Needless to say, the film contains a brilliant soundtrack, a coherent plot, and fantastic elements of comedy. If viewers watch this movie with an open mind and a rich imagination, they are sure to enjoy it. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.